Hi, I'm Chris McCarvel and welcome to Play It All. We're going to cover a lot of ground on this DVD, not only learning the fundamentals of playing bass, but also applying these to all different kinds of styles of music. Now this, as well as all our programs, come with free online lesson support. All you have to do is go to the main menu of this DVD to get instructions on how to get online at rockhousemethod.com. Now bass is a really cool instrument to play just because it incorporates a lot of different influences from different instruments. Like for example, you may have really percussive elements from drums and you may have melodic instruments from guitar or vocals and stuff like that. Pretty much you get to play the best of everything. It's just a really fun instrument to play. So get ready and we're going to go into this right now. Let's go over the parts of the bass. There's three main sections that we're going to deal with. First one up here is the headstock. Second one is the neck. It's this whole part. And the last is the body, which is this, you know, the body part. So if we go into a little more detail, on the body, your bass may or may not have this big white or black thing, depends on what you have, or if you don't have one at all, that's cool. It's called a pick guard. And what that's for is for some people that play with a pick and they go like this kind of stuff all the time, they don't want to damage the finish on their instrument, so they made these pick guards. We're going to deal with like playing with your fingers, so it's probably not that useful unless you're like slapping something like that, but we'll get into that later. Um, this is the bridge right here. The bridge holds your strings onto the body, and there's some adjustable pieces on here called saddles, and they'll help adjust the height of your strings and make it more comfortable for you to play. Um, Moving over here, we got the pickups, and pickups are essentially microphones, and they pretty much can be adjusted too to be closer or farther away from the strings, and it just depends on what's comfortable for you, but you just want to remember that you don't want to get them too close to the strings because if you're playing really hard and your strings hit the pickups, it makes kind of an unpleasant sound. And uh, also since they are microphones, that means you can crank your amp up and scream in them and you'll definitely hear it. It's kind of cool. Also. Down here we've got knobs, and you may have 10 knobs, you may have one knob, they're all different, but they basically have the same purpose. It's usually a volume control, and you know, usually there's a bass and treble control. It's kind of like your home stereo setup. Then um, over here, or it may be on the front or the side of your bass, whatever, this is an input jack, and this is where your cable goes. And that's where you'd plug in to an amplifier so you can hear yourself better. Okay, so uh, I guess the last thing on the body too, are you're going to have uh, these little uh, strap lock things that are going to hold your strap on and um, that's all they're for. You can just throw your strap on those. Let's move up to the neck. So the neck is right here. The fingerboard is the part that you can see and that you're going to be playing on and that's the whole, you know, it's, it's pretty big. Um, on that are the frets and these are the vertical metal pieces and these are just where the different notes are. And you're going to see dots on them, and they may be in different places, but they're all do the same thing. And that shows you where you are while you're playing and stuff. That's, they're uh, kind of like the black and white keys of a piano. And also up here, this is the uh, zero fret, or it's called the nut. And that kind of anchors your strings in place on the neck. And we're going to move up to the headstock now. And that's up here. So we got a couple things up here that you may or may not have on your bass, and that's one of these guys. This is just a washer that holds your strings down so that they don't buzz. And you can see, like on this bass over here, they don't have them, and you know your bass may or may not it doesn't affect it at all. It's just a certain design for basses. Um, also, we have tuning machines, and that's what your strings wrap around so you can tune it. And then these are the tuning keys, and that's actually how you tune your bass sharp or flat. And that's really it. Okay, I know you're psyched to get playing and get going on this stuff, but there's a couple things that I just want to go over with you before we start. And that's actually holding your bass, like how you're going to hold each hand while you're playing. So let's start with your right hand. And what you're going to do with your right hand is kind of, if you're sitting down, you're going to be holding the bass, just kind of relax with it. And you're going to take your arm and kind of rest it on the top over here. And uh, it's just sort of going to, you know, kind of just relax your shoulder, try not to get all tensed up like this, because that happens a lot, and just relax and your hand's going to kind of center over the strings. And you can, if you want, you can put your thumb on the top of the pickups right here, and that'll kind of help you out a little bit so you can kind of pull the strings towards your thumb. That's kind of what you want to do with the bass. You want to like pull towards you this way. And when you switch strings, you may want to move your thumb down or you can leave it in the same place 
you're going to have to kind of figure out what works good for you. There's a million different ways that you can play. Everyone's hands are different, so you're going to have to experiment a little bit. What you want to do is work out a way that you can play so that it doesn't hurt you. And mainly what you're going to do is be alternating with your two fingers of your right hand, which is like this. And then if you're switching strings, you can move this way, reaching across them. That's really all it is for your right hand. It's not too hard to do. So now let's take a look at your left hand. Your left hand is going to be a little trickier than your right hand. This is where bass really feels awkward at first, and it takes some time for the muscles to develop in your hand. What you want to do basically is think about your hand looking like a C. That's kind of which the position that you want to get in most of the time when you're playing. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to try to get a lot of my fingers around the front of the bass. And you're going to use your, your thumb like a pair of pliers almost, like it's, it's this kind of thing. So you're, you're pushing down with your fingers and you're pushing in with your thumb on the back of the neck. And I can show you that on the back where you should put your thumb is around the middle of the neck. And that really helps because it'll help automatically position your left hand in the right place. Okay, so when you're playing your notes, you can see how my fingers are kind of parallel to the frets. And that's a good kind of position to get used to playing in. And it's going to be awkward. It's going to like probably hurt in here a little bit at first. But that's normal. And your muscles will develop, and I promise it won't feel awkward after a while. So with this, it's pretty much keeping your fingers in control and keeping them down holding them down hard enough so that you're not buzzing notes as you're playing. Just like this kind of thing. And some things that I'm doing, I'm, I'm going to discuss later, are one finger per fret. And that means in a four fret area, you can play one note with each finger. And that's really it. Okay, we got a tune before we can play, so let's get going with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play each note on my bass and you there in the home audience can uh, tune along with me. And I know this is a little awkward at first because it takes some time for your ears to really develop. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on my E string. And the E string is the biggest string. It's the one that's closest to me. And if you watch my right hand, that means uh, you can kind of watch how I'm playing it. So all you do is just play it once. And what you want to try to do is match your bass to the, the same note as this one. And the way you're going to do that is by using your left hand up here. These are the tuning keys. And what you're going to do is either turn it tighter or looser. And you can feel which way is tighter and looser. And that'll actually change your pitch, sharp or flat. Sharp means higher pitched, flat means lower pitched. So what you want to do is get rid of that warbling sound that happens. And if you can't find that at all, you can go online to download a tuner that we have, because the most accurate way to really tune is using an electronic tuner. Or if you really are lost, you can contact your local music store and they'll be able to help you out. So let's try this again with all four strings now. Here we go with the E string. It may take a little while, but that's cool. You'll get used to it. All right, and on to the A string, which is the next string up. Okay, your next string up from that is called the D string. Now your last string is called the G string. All set, let's get ready to start playing on this next lesson. What you're looking at right now is a bar of tablature you'll see four horizontal lines, and those represent the strings on your bass. The top line is going to represent your G string, which is the smallest string. The one below that is your D string. Below that is your A string, and beneath that is your E string, the biggest string. You're also going to see some numbers on the strings. 
These correspond to frets that you're going to be playing on with your left hand. So for example, you'll see a zero. That would mean not to play any frets at all. That's an open string. When you see a three, that means with your left hand, you're going to play the third fret on the E string, because that's where the three is. The next string up, you're going to see a two, and that's your A string. That means you're going to play on the second fret on your A string. And then above that, you're going to see the D string has a two also. So you're going to take your finger off the A string and place it on the D string and play on the second fret. Now you may notice these little numbers underneath the numbers that are on the strings, and these correspond to your left hand fingers that should be playing these notes on the frets. The little number one corresponds to your index finger, number two is your second finger, number three obviously your third finger, and four would be your pinky. This just helps you play when you're trying to work out positions because a lot of times you're going to run into things that are complicated or seem like you don't have enough fingers to play. So this will help you out. Here we go, we're going to start playing. First thing we're going to look at is playing with your right hand and we're going to talk about actually playing the strings, switching strings, and muting them with your left hand. Because what happens sometimes is when you're playing a note, when you go to play another string, that first note is still ringing out and you're going to get that kind of sound. So what you want to do is use your left hand to actually stop the strings in between when you're playing. So let's say for example you play a note on your E string. Now you go to play a note on your A string, you stop the E string with your left hand and play the A string. That's really all you do. So that doesn't mean you're actually holding notes down, you're just going to stop the strings from moving with your left hand. Now the form that we're going to use for this is called a blues pattern. And what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to show you two different variations for it. We're going to play one just completely straight through which shows alternating with your uh, right hand with just your first two fingers. And that's going to be something like this, where you just play and the finger that you start with is called your leading finger. So that means if you're going to lead with your first finger, you start one, two, one, two. And then when you switch strings, remember to stop the string that you were playing before and switch. Okay, on the second time around, when we start playing it, I'm going to play it in a shuffle rhythm, which is more like this. You may be pretty familiar with that. That's a common sound in blues. Okay, before we play this through with the backing track, I want to show it to you just on, on my own. We're going to start with the straight version, which means we're just going to be playing just in a straight rhythm with our right hand. So we're going to start on the A string, and remember that's the string that's the second one up from the one that's closest to you. So play along with me. It's going to go like this. One, two, three, four. to the D string. Remember to mute. Back to your A string. Remember to keep alternating with your right hand. Now down to your E string. Then back up to your A string. Now I'm going to switch the rhythm up and we're going to do it in a shuffle. Here we go. Up to your D string. You're back on your A. Now we're going to your E. back up to your A. Cool. So remember, we're going to do this with the backing track now. Remember to keep alternating and remember to mute your strings as you play them. So here we go with the backing track.
shuffle. Okay, so that's how a blues pattern sounds using your open strings. Remember, you can download any of these backing tracks off of our support site. And it's pretty cool being able to make music just using your open strings. We're going to get a little more complicated in our next lessons, but that's basically how you're going to play. Okay, now we're going to throw your left hand into the mix. So let's concentrate on your left hand for now, and we'll get back to your right hand. So remember that you're going to keep your, your C shape with your left hand keeping your thumb around the middle of the back of the neck. And when you're playing notes on the fingerboard, you want to play them right behind the fret instead of way behind the fret. See the difference in sound? That's right behind it. This is way behind it. Hear how it buzzes? You want to try to get right behind it so that we can get a clean sound to happen. And it doesn't, doesn't, you don't have to press as hard to do that. So this exercise is going to start on your fifth fret. And the way that you can find that is to reach all the way down and count your frets up. This fret is the first one. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So that means you're going to play right behind the fifth fret for our first note. So this first exercise is going to go fifth fret, seventh fret, sixth fret, seventh fret. So now you want to try to play this with one finger per fret. That means you're not going to just slide with one finger. You're not just going to go You want to reach with your other fingers and try to stretch them out. Now, a good thing to keep in mind when you're playing this is I want to try to get you to keep your fingers down over the frets. You want to try to stop this from happening. You want to try to keep them over the notes because you need to have your fingers ready to switch strings or to play other notes. So let's try this together on the G string. And with your right hand, you're just going to be alternating when you're playing the notes. This is more of a focus on your left hand, though, for right now. So here we go. Cool. Let's try two of them. We'll put them together. Cool. So remember, you want to try to keep your fingers over the strings, not flying away. That's what makes this exercise cool. It may hurt a little bit in here, and that's totally normal, but these muscles have to develop, and this is what will help you do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to play this, and we're going to cross the strings as we do it. We'll do each string twice, and then we'll move strings down. So let's try that together. Here we go. Same thing on your D string. A string. So this is really an exercise about control, like you're trying to train your muscles to do the right thing. So we're going to do a little bit harder version of this exercise now. And what we're going to do is use your first finger on the fifth fret. We're going to stretch up with your pinky to play the eighth fret, your third finger on the seventh fret, and then back to the eighth fret using your pinky. Now the thing to stress on this is that when you play with your pinky, you want to keep your hands down on the frets. So when you're playing your first finger here, your pinky's here, see where my first finger is still? It's still over this fifth fret. You want to try to not do this. And that also like gets your shoulder involved in here and you start convulsing and stuff, and that's no fun. So fifth fret, eighth fret, seventh fret, eighth fret. You want to keep your fingers working hard, but you want to relax the rest of your arm and keep breathing when you play this, because it's real easy to tense up. So let's try this twice. Remember 
to keep alternating with your right hand, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to play it twice on each string, and we're going to go through your G, your D, your A, and your E strings. D string. Keep your hand stretched out. A string. Keep alternating with your right hand. E string, cool, and one last thing I want to show you before we do, before we go on to another lesson, is with your right hand you can double all these notes, and that's going to help you get used to like doing a whole bunch of different things with your hands at the same time, because I know this probably feels pretty unusual to start with, so for, this is just called doubling your notes, and here's how it sounds. So you can see now it's not like your hands are just doing the same thing together. It's a little bit trickier. So let's play this all the way down the strings, and I'm going to do it a little bit quicker like that. So here we go. Okay, now I want to make this even more difficult for you. We're going to talk about tapping your foot while you're playing. And this next exercise is going to use your right hand really only. We're going to use open strings, but we're also going to be tapping your foot. What this is going to do, it's going to help you lock into the drum parts and help you lock into other musicians so that you can have your foot doing something constant where you're playing more complicated things with your hands. This kind of makes everything you do come out in time. So the first thing I want to talk about is your foot. So what we're going to do, the way we count, is we're going to count the numbers when you're down and we're going to say and when your foot's up. So for example, we're going to go one and, two and, three and, four and. Just like that. So that's always going to be counting like while we're playing. And it's just going to repeat after four and, we're going to go back to one and. So for example, if I was going to play on all the down beats, I would play one and, two and, three and, four and. So what's cool is you can take these and do different variations of them. So for example, say I want to play on the one, I want to play on the three, and then I want to play on the and of three. So if we figure that out with our foot, we're going to be playing on the one, and, two, and, three, and. So what's cool about that is you know where you are all the time based on where your foot is. So your tempo is going to come from your foot. So let's try that together. And we're using a five string bass right now. So the second string away from me is going to be your E string for those of you that are using a four string bass. So let's just play with that. So I'm going to count to four, then we're going to start playing. We're going to do the one, we're going to play on the three, and we're going to play on the and of three, which is after it. You ready? One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Cool. So let's try a slightly different rhythm. We're going to do one, we're going to play the and of two, and we're going to play the downbeat of three. So the way that's going to sound, if we work that out with our foot, we're going to play on our E string again. We're going to do the one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. So let's try this together. Again, we're using our E string. And I'll just count to four and we'll both play. Here we go. One and two and three and four and. Two and three and four and. This may seem kind of easy at first if you're just listening to it, but once you really try to do this with your foot and with your hand, to get it to all work together it takes a little bit of time. So review these a few times before you get on to more complicated things. So this last one I'm going to do is probably the trickiest because we're going to be playing on more of the upbeats this time. We're going to play on the downbeat of one, 
we're going to play on the AND of 2, and we're going to play on the AND of 3. So let's figure that one out. We're going to go 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and down B to 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and. Cool. So now what we can do is we can play this along with a steady drum beat. So we're going to use a backing track for that. And again, you can download that off our support site. So what you're going to do is remember to keep your foot down, up, down, up with the tempo. And I'll count you in. I'm going to play all of these patterns through, and I'll let you know which ones they are before we start. So we're going to start with our first exercise, which is playing on the one. We're playing on the downbeat of three, and we're playing on the and of three. So here's how it sounds with the backing track. And again, I'm just using my E string. Here we go. I'm going to count you in. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and here we go. Okay. So what's cool about that is you may have been listening to it and you can hear how the kick drum was almost playing the same thing that you were. And that'll really help lock you into time with your foot and that helps you with your playing and stuff. And that makes it a little more difficult when we have a part like this coming up where we're going to have you playing the downbeat, you're going to be playing the and of two, and you're going to be playing the downbeat of three. So let's try this with the backing track also. Here's how this sounds. One, two, and three, and four, and one. And two and three and four and and three and four and cool. Okay, so this one is the most complicated one that we're gonna do. We're gonna be playing on the downbeat of one, we're gonna be playing the up the and of two, and we're gonna be playing the and of three. And at this tempo, it's a little tricky because the, the kick drum pattern is kind of contrary to what you're doing. And it's just tricky to keep your foot going and your head counting the right way and your fingers doing all this stuff at the same time. So just remember that you can download any of these backing tracks off our support site. And we'll try it with the backing track right now. One, two, three, and four, and. So remember just to review these and take your time with them and you can come up with infinite variety of this stuff. And just try to keep your foot going with whatever you're playing and it should really lock you down in time. Okay, now we're going to do a complete playing experience and that means we're going to play with a backing track and we're going to do this in a rock style, kind of like a medium rock style, not anything too crazy yet. We're just going to remember to keep tapping your foot we're going to alternate with your right hand. We're not going to really do much with your left hand except mute the strings. And it's going to jump around, so let's just uh, check out some of how it goes. We're going to be playing a long time on your A string, so for right now I'm just going to play it eight times. So we're going to go... We're going to go up to the D string. to mute with your left hand and tap with your foot to your D string, E string. Now we got to reach all the way up to your G string, so this is tricky. Back to your E string. Okay, so now we're going to try this whole thing with the, with the backing track and uh, 
it's a little bit more distracting because there's a lot more going on with the music. So when you play, we're just going to keep playing the same thing we did and just try not to get distracted by what's going on in the music and just listen to where we're going. Here we go. Okay, now let's talk about some scales. We're going to talk about a minor pentatonic scale, and that has five notes in it. And I can show it to you in two different positions. The first one's going to be open position, and the reason I want to show you this scale is because it's really common in a lot of different styles of music. So the first note of this is going to be your open A string. The second note of it is going to be on your third fret on the A string. The third note's going to be your open D string then to your 2nd fret on the D string, open G, and then the 2nd fret on your G string. So that's the scale all the way up. We'll play that together. You can play it from the top down. So that's a minor pentatonic scale in open position. Okay, now I'm going to show you that same scale using closed position, which means that there's not going to be any open strings on it. So what's cool about closed position, and that means there's more notes that are available to you once we get out of these positions. So um, the first note is going to start on A, which is going to be on the fifth fret of your E string, right here. Now we're going to reach up and play the second note on the eighth fret of your E string. You want to remember to keep your hands down and not to start flopping around like this. The next note is on the 5th fret of your A string. The next is on the 7th fret of your A string. Next is on the 5th fret of your D string. Then the last one is on the 7th fret of your D string also. So let's play this position through together. Then back down. Cool, and you want to remember to keep your hands down all the time. So now what's cool is we can take those notes, we don't necessarily have to play them in that order when you're playing music. We can take any of those different notes and just kind of screw around with them until we get some sounds we like. And that's kind of how you start developing your own phrasing, sort of randomly playing through scales. So what I can do, let's take the closed position for example. Um, if I want to do like more of like a, a rock kind of beat, I can kind of keep a rhythm going that's more like... Like, so I'm going to take that kind of rhythm, I'm going to play through that scale just sort of randomly, and you can hear how it sounds. So now what I want to do is I want to play that with a backing track. And what I want to do is um, I'm going to try to shuffle through some different styles with it, so you can kind of hear how those same notes can use different styles. Remember that you can download all these backing tracks off our support site. So let's try this now with a backing track. OK, 
Okay, now I'm gonna take that same thing and I'm just gonna make it heavier by just getting louder with my right hand and just changing the rhythm up a little bit. Here are the sounds. Now I'm going to take that same similar kind of thing and I'm going to play more of a funk type of line through it. Okay, now let me take the same thing and I'm going to try this in the open position with more of like a rock feel again. randomly play through these different styles and show you kind of how I would play this and it's more of like taking a whole bunch of different things and combining it together using your own imagination just using these patterns and these notes so check it out So it's kind of like the possibilities are endless with that. And just remember that you can download this as well as all the other backing tracks off our support site. There's other rhythms that you can do and one of them that we're going to work on now is called a triplet. And you can follow along in your tablature with this one because the, the fingering for your left hand is a little bit wacky. So what we're going to do is when we're tapping our foot down, up, down, up, down, up. Instead of just playing down and up, we're going to be playing in sets of three, which is where the triplet comes from. So in other words, it's going to sound like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You're kind of dividing the space with three notes instead of two. So what I want to have you play is first we're going to play up the scale by itself, just three notes on it, three. You're going to play three notes with your right hand on each note of the scale. So we're going to go two, three, next note. And then we're going to play back down. Remember this and all the other scale patterns of this are on the website that you can check out too because there's a bunch of patterns that connect from this that you can use. So let's do this now, except we're going to make a different pattern with our left hand that works out to a really good exercise, and it's kind of playing in groups of three different notes. So for example, the first section would go, and the next one would go, next, and then the last one, and this is all in your tablature, so follow along with this if you can. Here we go. the same thing back down. Cool. I'm going to try it a little quicker. And then back down. Okay, we'll try it one more time. And back down.
Okay, octaves and fifths are things that bass players play a lot of, and I use it a lot in my playing, and let me explain these to you right now. Um, what we've got to find is a root note to start with. So right now we'll start on the seventh fret of our A string, which is an E. Now to play an octave to that E, you're going to play on the ninth fret of your G string. Now if you listen to these notes, they're actually the same notes. It's just that the higher one is resonating twice as fast as the lower one. They're both E's. Now a fifth is kind of in the middle between those two. So to play a fifth, you're going to play the ninth fret of your D string, which is here. So I'm going to play your root note, and then your fifth. So what's cool about this pattern is that you can play it anywhere all over your uh, fingerboard. So for example, you can play down here, the octave, or you can play your fifth. Now I can move this all over and keep going with that. Or I can do all fifths. Pretty much wherever you want. Now there's also other positions that you can play this in. You can play it in open position, like for example playing your open E string, and then you can play your second fret on your D string, right here. Same works for your A string. Now the same thing goes for fifths. If I'm playing my open E string, I can play the second fret of my A string and have a fifth. I'm going to show you a music example, and it's a backing track. And I'm going to play my octaves. Instead of using the pattern I just showed you, I'm going to play my, we're going to center around E, the open E. I'm going to play the octave of my E on the seventh fret of our A string, which is where we started the first octave pattern that I showed you. So now we've got low E and then a higher E. And this backing track is only going to deal with the octaves. I'll throw the fifths in halfway through it so that way you can see how that sounds. Where the rhythm's a little bit tricky, so let me show you that first and we'll get your foot going and it'll be cool. So if this is your foot, down, up, down, up, down, up, here's how the rhythm's gonna sound. So now what I want to do is on one of these notes, I'm going to add the octave in, and that's going to sound like this. Now I'm going to add the fifth instead of the octave. So. Now we're going to try this with the backing track. Remember to keep tapping your foot and remember to keep alternating with your right hand. Here we go. All right, now we're going to get to the fun stuff. This is the slap and pop stuff, and it's, it's pretty cool. There's two main things that we got to think about, and we're going to deal with your right hand on this first. The first thing we want to deal is a slap, and we're going to do that with your thumb. And what we're going to do is you want to pretty much slap the strings right on here with your thumb. The way to make it work and make it sound like a note is to get your thumb off the string as fast as you get it on. So you don't want to just leave your thumb down or else it's going to sound like you're not going to get any note. If you want it to sound really good, you want to get your thumb on and off as quick as you can. 
Now a bass has big telephone wire strings on it, so it's like you don't have to worry about breaking the strings. They're probably not going to. Eventually they will, but it's like you don't have to treat it like super delicate. When we go to the other strings, it gets a little more difficult with your thumb because your thumb's kind of floating and flopping around and it's hard to get it to not hit the other strings. That's why it's important to mute with your left hand while you're doing this on the other strings. So if we're going to try this on our A string with our thumb, that's slapping that way. Now generally, you don't slap on your D and your G strings just because you can snap those with your right hand also. So the way that you snap is you hook your first finger under the D string, for example, and you just want to pull it hard away from it. Don't be afraid. Really snap it. Same with your G string. It's not going to break the strings because you can even pick the bass up by it and it's not going anywhere. So what's cool is you can also snap with your second finger if you want on your G string. And that's something that I do because it makes it a little bit easier when you're snapping this way. Knock myself out of tune. Okay, so what I can show you with this is let's deal with octaves because octaves are pretty simple to do and they're pretty easy with your right hand and they make a good exercise for your, uh, for your both hands together. So what I want to do is slap your open E string and now we're going to snap the second fret on your D string. So we have slap and snap or pop it's usually called. Now we're going to move that pattern up with your left hand and play the third fret on your E string and the fifth fret of your D string. Now we're going to move that up and play the 5th fret on your E string and the 7th fret on your D string. So now if we play this all together... And that's going to be the elements that make up our next music example of slapping and popping. So this one, I'm going to play this in a little bit different rhythm, but it's pretty recognizable. It's a little tricky to get that much control, but just take your time and do it slow, and then eventually we'll do it with the backing track. So let's try that now. There's a lot of other techniques that you can combine with this, but if you mainly stick to these few techniques, you can pretty much do a whole bunch of different things with it. It's pretty fun. All right, now we're going to talk about arpeggios, and there's two different kinds of arpeggios that we're going to talk about. First one is a major arpeggio, and the, you can follow along on this in your tablature, but pretty much the shape for it is going to go like this. You're going to use your second finger on the fifth fret of your E string. Then you're going to play the 4th fret of your A string. Then you're going to reach up and play the 7th fret of your A string with your pinky. That's called a major arpeggio. So we know that shape. That shape you can take and play anywhere you want. It's the same shape, but it has different kinds of sounds wherever you play it. Now let's try another shape called a minor arpeggio. So we'll start in the same place. We'll play the 5th fret of your E string. Now we're going to play the 8th fret of your E string and the 7th fret of your A string. To me, this one's a little bit harder to play. And the same thing goes for this, too. You can move this around and play it wherever you want. Now, if you listen to the emotional quality of those, the first one kind of sounds bright and happy, whereas the second one sounds kind of more somber and dark. So these are good things to know when you're trying to write your own music, and when you're fooling around with these kind of sounds, you'll know kind of based on what you like, you can find these sounds. But what's cool is we can take these shapes and we can kind of create new music patterns out of them and stuff, and it's even in a lot of songs. 
And what I'm getting at is we're going to be doing a backing track using major and minor arpeggios. So for example, what I want to show you, we're going to start a major arpeggio. And again, just refer to your tablature if you get lost so you can see the shapes for this stuff. But we're going to start it, the root note being on the seventh fret of your A string. Now we're going to come down to the fourth fret of your E string with your first finger, and we're going to play a minor arpeggio. And we're going to go up to your A string, still on the fourth fret, and play another minor arpeggio. Now to the seventh fret on your E string, and we're going to do a major arpeggio. Okay. So let's string that all together. Okay, so that's one half of the backing track that we're going to play with. There's another section of that, but it's really easy. Let's try that. The first part, this, actually the first note of the second part starts on the fifth fret of your E string, and it's a major arpeggio. Now we're going to play the seventh fret of your E string, another major arpeggio. And then back up to your A string on the seventh fret, another major arpeggio. Okay, so let's play that whole part together. Remember again while you're playing all these things to keep your fingers down over the frets and to not try to, you know, flop around all over the place. We're going to try this now with a backing track and you can play along with it and remember that we're going to go from the first section, we're probably going to do it a couple times, into the second section. So remember to practice these things in pieces, you're not just going to be able to play all of it all together all at once. Wherever you start to stumble, that's what you need to work on. So let's try it with the backing track and see how it sounds. Second part. Okay, if you guys are ready to rock out, this is the one. So we're going to start right now with your open A string and we're going to do kind of like a metal rhythm through this. It's going to go... So let's start with that phrase. You got open A, open A, third fret of your E string, again, and then to your open A again. Now we're going to do third fret of your E string, second fret of your E string, open E. So we do that whole phrase together. We got Now I'm kind of playing harder with my right hand to get those strings to rasp and kind of growl like that. And that's more of a metal sound and that's for me personally more of where I live. OK, 
Okay, so take some time to get smooth with that because the rhythms are kind of unusual and stuff and it takes a little bit to get like where it's comfortable. And there's two parts to this also. The second part is going to be the third fret of your A string. Now to your open D string. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. We're going to go second fret of your D string twice. Now your open D twice. Now we're going to do the first fret of your A string, which may sound really odd by itself. But now we're going to go to the open A. Now to your third fret of your E string, and then your open E. So that whole kind of run is what I consider it. It's more almost like a fill is. Cool. So let's tie those two sections of that second part together. So we're going to do. play pretty hard with your right hand because this is going to be an aggressive kind of sound. So now remember too that you have your first part, we have to tie that into our second part and that's something that you should practice also. Like make sure you can play your first part perfectly, make sure you can play your second part perfectly and then work on getting those two parts to work together. Because if you just practice the parts on their own, it's sometimes the transition parts that get kind of strange. So remember too that you can get all these backing tracks too off the website. So let's hear this with the backing track. Second part. All right, cool. So now remember too, you can make lots of cool faces and stuff like that, and that's the essence of playing heavy metal. <laughs>